Light Trader Tina here once again from shortmetina.com with my daily recap. We have a couple of grounds to cover, so let's just jump right into it. What is our mission? Right? I always say I want to start off our videos with our mission because it sets the tone for not only what we do at Short Me Tina, but it sets the tone for the videos that we recap. What is our purpose? What is our mission? Our mission is to build a powerhouse, right? A powerhouse, big, bold, capital letters. So I'm not trying to build like the average trader. Right? I'm not trying to build the less than average or below average trader. We're trying to build a powerhouse, like, like moats, right, of successful traders. And to help you find more winners, we conclude if you win, we win. If you win, right, if what we teach you makes sense and it works, you're going to go and you're going to sing us praise, right? That's what we want you to do if you win. For that to happen, for that to happen in this moment, right, at this time, engage, get involved. I've realized it's the same uh, handful or two handful of folks that comment uh, and they're reaching out for help. But then when you compare that to the amount of views that I get, when you compare that to the emails that I get, when you compare that to the amount of signups that I get daily, I know there's more folks out there, are more new traders or seasoned traders that are having frustrations, right? They're not getting to that next level that they that they want to get to, or uh, things are a bit confusing to them. The market, they don't understand it. So at this time, if you're a trader, you're not seeing the successes that you want to see, you think things don't make any sense, that's okay. Guess what? We all start somewhere. Uh, I've been doing this for about uh, 15 years, I or over 15 years, rather. So 100% where I am now, I was not there in the first year. In the first year, I got the idea of the stock market. I understood the concept, but I lost a whole lot of money, right? I was, I, man, let me tell you, if, if I told you some stories right now, it is laughable. I say all that to say, uh, granted, I've been doing this for a long time and there's things, like, I, 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 I believe I do. I have a very thorough understanding of the market, but it took time to develop. So if you were not, you know, 15 years into your trading, you're only six months or a year and you're running into frustrations, don't be shy. In the comment section, tell me what your biggest frustration is. Uh, if I can, you know, if I can, if I had, if I was asked to essentially identify the top five or identify the frustrations that folks typically email me about, more or less, they're, they're all the same. So, Chances are you're experiencing what a lot of other traders are experiencing. So I, there's no shame in it, right? There's no shame. Uh, this is a skill that can be learned. So in the comments section, let us know what your biggest frustration is in reaching your trading goals. That way we can better serve you, better help you. And lastly, I'm going to click the link above. I did a video identifying what I think the three pillars to successful trading are, the three foundational principles of successful trading. Uh, I'm going to link that in short if you have not watched that video. Super important. I think it is a, maybe it's me because it's my work. Obviously, I'm going to sing praises for the things that I do. Uh, but that aside, I really think it gets to the heart of trading. It gets to the heart. Granted, it's theoretical, it's conceptual in nature, uh, but I don't think that the material is that uh, difficult to understand. So click the link and watch that video and uh, let's recap the overall markets. All right, and we have the S&P 500 daily chart dating back to, uh, we can say mid-March. I wanted to zoom in so folks can see price action today. Look, the market isn't closed yet. There's about uh, eight minutes or so left before the market closes. Uh, right now, I see a quote of 296.10. Clearly, we made all-time highs today in the SPY, uh, going as high as 296.44. So we pierced through that res resistance level I've been talking about uh, of 293 to 295, hence why I said many, many times over, it's hard not to be bullish when the markets is showing you these types of price action. Um, but granted, things are it's good. We're making all time highs. That's great. Uh, but obviously, it's about sustainability. Can we sustain this breakout here, or will we have a pullback again? The market isn't closed, but based on price action, based on this candle, looks like we're going to close uh, relatively close to the high of the day. So so far, so good. What else? 
And then we have the IWM daily chart. Again, the market is not closed a few minutes from market close, uh, but this chart dates back to around June of 2018. I have identified numerous times the levels that I'm paying attention to. Uh, obviously, uh, it's good that we're holding support of 148 to 150, the shorter term support here, this red line. Uh, right now, I see a quote of 155.40. We went as high as, what was today's high? Let me see. We went as high as 156.24. Great. Remember what I said. I don't want the IWM hanging around the support area of, area of 148 to 150. I actually wanted to uh, start that mark up, right? I wanted to drift more towards that resistance level that we've had a hard time uh, breaking through of 160. So the next steps, obviously we need to remain above 148 to 150, but the next steps for me in the IWM to confirm this huge bull rally that we're potentially potentially seeing underway. Uh, the next steps is for the IWM to pierce through that 160 level and this time make it the new floor. It needs to hold. It needs to be sustained. It needs to, uh, again, 160 uh, going forward should now start to act as support versus uh, what it is now, which is resistance. And if the IWM can do that, as I've maintained, you, you know, the trade has to be, the trade has to be on the long side. Uh, someone commented in the comment section uh overall markets first individual stocks second like i know people get excited for little things or different things like that gets me excited to, to hear someone say that or to read that somewhere absolutely overall markets first what's the markets doing the market is acting relatively bullish so where should your trades be your trades should be on the long side if you look at the overall markets right and you look at individual stocks most stocks are up today right Individual stocks, uh, pardon, overall markets first, individual stocks second. And if that does not make sense, comment in the comment section and let me know. What else? All right, so we have ticker MLNT. I did a video on this uh, stock yesterday. Uh, it fared a lot better yesterday than it is today, off about 18%. So I initially said, well, if it can, well, I said two things. I said to pay attention to after hours and pre-market. Pre-market was a little funky. I think at one point it had pulled back to the low fours. Then we were up in pre-market. At any rate, we ended up opening... Uh, we ended up opening above the day's high, the previous day's high of 727, which is amazing. Uh, so we opened above this level, and I said that was the level to pay attention to yesterday's high of 727. If it can uh, get above that and sustain that, chance are the stock is going to run. It had a slight run, going as high as 814. Unfortunately, that was not sustained, and here we are, major pullback. Uh, right now, it's um, off about north of 18%. Uh, final quote, or not final, the quote I see now is 527, market still isn't closed, uh, the low of the day is 510. So uh, based on this, heading in tomorrow, heading into tomorrow, if it breaks the low of the day, and you, you know that spiel, right, you know the spiel if the stock, overall, not always, if the stock closes close to the low of the day, chances are the selling will continue into the following day, if not that week. Uh, so sitting here at 527, the low clocking it at 510, we are far away uh, off from uh, the high of 814, closer to the low. So chances are this might pull back a little bit more. So we had the run yesterday, couldn't be sustained today. Uh, you know, it overshot a little bit, but couldn't hold on to that hold, uh, to that high. Uh, so overall, uh, in the shorter term, I'm, I I have no other choice but to be uh, slightly bearish. Two tails. Yesterday told a different story than today, such as the market. Uh, hence why I indicated that these stocks can run really quick, right? I think it was up something like 200% yesterday, uh, but the pullbacks are just as swiftly. Uh, and so if you bought in yesterday at the high, you're you're down pretty sharply right now. You're down uh, over 20%, I would say. Um, all right, that's it. What else? All right, so short short recap. So let's round it out with ticker uh, VSTM off about 16% uh, on the day. Like I've indicated before, we do not always get it right, but we do our best to not, you know, we, when a stock is not showing us a profit, we're not sitting there like hoping it's going to come back, it's going to come back. If we let it go and it comes back, so what? That is the stock market. And especially if you're looking to have longevity uh, in the stock market, you kind of have to get accustomed to those things. Um, so uh, let's use VSTM as uh, for illustrative purposes. Daily chart, we actually went long several times, but the most recent time we went long this stock, uh, right around here, around support of around, let's say, $3. We saw it rally to around three sixty-five. dollars uh, Didn't take the profits because that's not what our aim was. And then, you know, and then um, 
not sure what happened. Uh, probably we got stopped out when the stock sold off. I think it was, it stole off a lot. Uh, and so we got stopped out. We honored our stop. We let it go. Um, and relatively speaking, we did not lose a lot or we should not have lost a lot on that trade. What if we decided to hold on when a critical level was broken or when we were stopped out thinking, right, not honoring our stops and thinking that the stock would come back? Look what eventually happened again. We got in around three, sitting here at 159 with the low clocking in at 151. We would have been down at this point 50 or 60 percent on the trade if we held on and uh, and hope that the stock would go back. And if you look at the pattern, um, inverted, uh, pardon, not inverted, head and shoulder top left shoulder, head, right shoulder, which is a very bearish chart pattern. This blue line here, we call that the neckline. It broke the neck, not left, uh, it broke the neckline. That should have signaled Q to get out. But for the folks who did, well, one, for the folks who don't understand charting, uh, for the folks who do not understand rules and discipline and stops and all those things, those, you know, those things that no one likes to talk about when it comes to trading, had they have not honored their stop, or didn't see this pattern, or didn't realize that support was broken and they held on to this trade, they wouldn't be faring well so far, especially with the stock off about 16%. So we do not, and I want to make that clear, right? I talk a lot about our winners, but we do not always get it right. We get it right based on our formula. We obviously, we get it right enough, and our profits are large enough that when we do get stopped out and we take a loss, it's not really meaningful to the broader picture, right? I know a lot of folks, they like to hold on to their losers. They wish and pray that it would come back. Some of them do come back. A lot of them don't, right? So um, so that's kind of it. I hope that makes sense. Uh, we got into this trade, didn't work out. We honored our stop. Looking at what happened today, had we have not honored our stop, that, that loss would have turned into an even larger loss, right? Um, so with VSTM closed at 159, low clocking in at 151, expect further uh, downside um, because it closed relatively close to the low of the day. So again, we're going to cap it there. Uh, minor recap, but recap nonetheless. Uh, Tina here once again from shortmeetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of this video, I'd like for you to do three things for me. One, comment in the comment section. I only really analyzed the... Uh, uh, the SPY, the IWM, MLNT, and VSTM, but I've done so many others uh, yesterday, the day before, this week. I think on average I've been doing about 10. Uh, so go listen to those. Comment in the comment section. Let me know whether or not you agree or disagree with my analysis. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, uh, if you want more videos like this, I do them every single day. So make sure that you subscribe at our YouTube channel. And lastly, I've been trading for well over 15 years. So if you want more uh, value. I talk about there are things that I send to folks on my emailing list that I do not make uh, available public um, or, uh, you know, available to the public. So if you want more value, then head on over to shortmeetina.com, sign up, become a member. Thank you for listening. And as always, thank you for the support.